Because God don't know we, some messages require more than one time you teaching it and preaching it. Sometimes we need to let it sink deep in. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter number 12. God, open up our understanding. As we open up the word of God tonight, we started on Sunday dealing with the harvest. It's plenty of but the labors of you. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter number 12, and verse 2. Somebody say the harvest. Amen. Like Sunday, I told y'all, sometimes the devil will get us distracted and we can't focus on the things that we need to focus on. Amen? Amen? Amen. But we got to keep our mind and our hearts focused on Jesus. Mark chapter number 12 and verse, we're going to start with verse number 1. Mark chapter 12 and verse 1, and the word of God reads as follows. And he began to speak unto them by parables said a, 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 said what a certain rich man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it and digged around about for the wine fat and built a tower and led it out to the husband and went to the far country. Now every time you're looking at Jesus, a lot of times you refer to things he loved referring to planting and sowing. Amen. He loved, to, he loved to refer to planting and sowing. And he said, and he said, and at the season, okay, and led it out to husbandmen and went out to a far country. And at the season, he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and they beat him and sent him away empty. Amen. So, you know, a lot of times we think about that, we think about the fact that. The, a lot of times you're mistreated in the harvest. A lot of times people come and kiss you in the harvest. And you think everybody gonna be your friend in the harvest, you're highly mistaken. And he says that they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he said unto them another servant. 
children and 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 and, 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 and at him they cast stone and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully him. And again he sent another and he sent another and him they killed. And others beating some and killing some, having yet therefore one son he his beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and they killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. And when that and 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 and, and, and what shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy those husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. Amen? Amen. 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 He was prophesying about himself. How they were going to treat him. But we still got to go to the harvest. Jesus loved souls. He was willing to die. John chapter number 3 verse 16 says what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, we ask that you be with my mouth tonight. Help us as we go into this word. God, talk to us tonight. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Saints, I told y'all before, we need to start changing the way we do things. Amen. Churches are drying up all over the country because we have neglected the halls. We refuse to go. Amen. We have gotten comfortable in being churchy. I don't know. I'm just telling y'all what God loves. We've gotten comfortable with it. Ain't nothing wrong with being churchy, but the churchy and the building is not the harvest. Amen? Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. There's few people that's willing to do service in the harvest. Now everybody like the limelight. Everybody like the mic. They like the pulpit. They like to be called bishop. They like to be called pastor. They like to be called apostle, prophet, prophetess, evangelist. But my Lord, we need to go to the hearts. Churches, preaching, singing, jumping and shouting, and the only person being touched is us is missing God. Now look around. You see big old cathedrals. They're drying up. Because we have neglected the harvest. Pray ye therefore. Pray ye therefore. The Lord of the harvest. That he will set forth laborers into his heart. We don't need more preachers. Not, 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 not church preachers, that is. We need evangelists to go out to the halls. We need people to praise the Lord that's not waiting on a chop and a turn to preach in somebody's church. We need ministers that's willing to go to the streets. And one of the biggest harvests that we can have is on our job. Amen? Amen? And I'm not down in sending folks to Africa. I'm not down and sending folks uh, to different countries and missionaries. I pray for missionaries that go overseas. But beloved, there's a harvest of souls right in the hood and nobody want to go. You want to send somebody to Africa, then to send somebody to the hood sometime. I'm just telling you what God loves. And I believe in, I believe in missionaries. I believe in supporting foreign missions. But baby, we got local missions too that we need to support. Amen? Amen? Church has become a place where we can come and show off our gifts, our talent. I'm going to do my dance. I'm going to do my song. I'm going to do my this. I'm going to do my that. 
and we get hallelujah down there. Get me good. God is so good. He blessed me on Monday. He blessed me on Sunday. Y'all don't hear me. Ain't God all right. And the preachers can't live nothing, some of them. Just making noise. Why are we making noise? Because we ain't living nothing. Let's go to the word of God. So I'm praying that God will send forth laborers into manna that don't mind going to the halls. Ministry, and I, th Lord help me, I'm, I'm on eggshells. I'm on eggshells. The church, if we don't change, we're going to drop. I'm talking to anyone that say they're holiness, they're apostolic, they, you know, they're Pentecostal, Praise the Lord, Pentecostalism used to be one of the biggest growing religions. Oh my goodness, but praise the Lord, until we start changing, the smaller church is going to drop and die. We screaming, we hollering, we being dogmatic, and we ain't winning souls. Screaming, hollering, being dogmatic, telling everybody they're going to hell, ain't putting nobody in. Won't you show them? Why don't you go get them and bring them in and let them be taught? Ooh, pastor. Ooh. Luke chapter number 10. And verse 2. If you look back at Jesus' ministry, Jesus was somewhat nomadic. No, he didn't say in one place. He was nomadic. Ministry is a constant Moving body. We are called what? The body of Christ. And what does the body do? It moves around. It don't stay in one place. Anything that's dead ought to be what? Buried. You to be buried. Amen? Luke chapter number 10. Amen? Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 2. Are we there yet? Verse number 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them what? To and, and to before his face in every city and place where he himself would go, would come. The devil said he under them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his arms. Amen? Amen? Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Oh, come on here. Sometimes you go on your job, you run wolves. You run snakes. You want people that's venomous, that's trying to cause mess, that's sending you and bringing you stress. So the Bible says, go you never behold, I send you forth as lambs. And when we go on our job, it's hard to do this. It's hard to be a lamb on your job when you're around wolves and snakes. Sometimes you gotta do it. Amen. Among wolves. Carry me the purse, is what it say, right? No strip, no shoe, and salute no man by the way. Amen? The harvest is supposed to be able to supply them by every need you got. That's why he told them, don't take no money, because while you're doing this business, somebody going to pay you. Somebody is going to soak into you when you're doing God's business. Amen? Amen? So what's the role? What's the hold up now? Why can't we go to her? Oh, I got problems in this. I got problems over there. I got problems on my job. I got problems in my mind. You stop worrying about yourself. You stop being concerned about your own business and realize that there's a harvest of souls out there you got to go to. We got to get ourselves together. We got to pull ourselves together and go to the heart. Amen? And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. 
And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. And if not, it shall what? Turn to you again. Amen. Amen. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such thing as ye have, as ye as they give, for the labor is worthy of his eye. Go ye not from house to house. Talk about I own my Lord. And in whatsoever city ye enter, ye shall and that, that that they receive you eat such things that are set before you, and heal the sick. What did it say? And heal the sick that are in there in that are that therein and said unto them, the kingdom of God is come unto thee, unto you. Amen. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not. Go your ways. Don't be messmakers. Don't be confusion. I do not believe in preachers. I don't believe this is being a good example to the homes. I always be in an argument. I'm not a very confrontational man. I don't have time for it. I say what I have to say and I'm going about my business. I don't have time for confrontation. Some people thrive on confrontation. Some people thrive on it. I was telling my wife uh, recently, you know the bullies on the job. Because then you could tell that they was bullies. They were probably bullies when they were growing up. They didn't just they just didn't get the right person to get their hands on to them. They still carry that same messy spirit. As in the natural soul of the spirit. If you're messy in church, it's because you was messy before you got saved. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. If you like to fight in the world, if you don't watch that spirit, it's a fighting spirit to be on you in the house of God. I smite him in the name of the Lord. No, you don't. Okay, let's go a little far. Amen. Let's go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 8, and verse 22. Amen. The harvest. Somebody say the harvest. It's plenteous, but the labors are few. Amen. Somebody need a hug. Why well, won't you go to the halls? Did I say that? Oh, come on here. I ain't saying go get you no man off the dead row. I ain't say that. I say go to the halls. Get your mind off yourself. And you don't know what God's going to do for you on your job or when you go to a restaurant or when you're in the mall as you go to the halls. Transport it. Walk hold it. What do the word of God say? Genesis chapter number 8 and verse 22. As long as the earth remain, what? Seed, time, and harvest. Is that what it say? I'm going to get to it. Is that what it say? Amen. Summer and heat. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. It ain't going to change. God has set certain laws in nature. Now, this is teaching tonight. He has set it up that you're going to reap what you sow. That's the unbreakable, the unshakable, the unchangeable, the unalterable Lord of Harvest that I teach you in now. How is it that we think that we're not going to reap what we sow? It's a wrong, it's a form of insanity. You're mad. If you do dirt, dirt coming back to you. If you do good, good is coming back to you. As long as while the earth remaineth, here we go about that harvest, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall I see. Child of more folks be saying stuff to be lying. Child, they gonna come and you ain't gonna be able to tell them the difference between the one and the summer. That's just a lie. That's a lie. Has anybody heard old folks say that? Why they be lying like that? They must don't read their Bible. 
No, baby. She it says, as long while the earth is here, you can always have winter, you can always have summer, you can always have spring and fall. Some winters may be more colder, some summers may be more hotter, some summers may be more milder, some winters may be more, may be more hotter, but it's gonna eat it. It ain't gonna change. It's gonna always be seed time and harvest, summer, winter, whatever, while there's remaining. So as in the natural, so is in the spiritual. Galatians chapter number six. Talk about the harvest. When we go to the harvest and start showing some love, what's coming back to us? That's why I feel like church needs to be more than just out there preaching on the street corner with a mic. Ministry is more than street, uh, preaching on the street corner with a mic. Y'all know that, right? Y'all do understand that, right? There's jails you can go to. There's places that you can do. You can give out clothes. You can give out food, praise the Lord. You can do things like that. See, ministry is more than just with a microphone in your hand. Did you know that's a ministry of helps? The ministry of helps cleans the church. The ministry of helps do what? They'll mow the grass. The ministry of help will do work around the church. Every church needs somebody working in the ministry of helps. Every church needs that. Somebody needs to clean up the church. Somebody needs to make sure the carpet is clean, the bathrooms are clean. Somebody needs to make sure the cans are uh, dumped, trash cans are dumped. Oh, out there, everybody's been in jumping and shouting. Somebody got to clean up. That's a ministry of helps. Since they don't have a spotlight, we don't like that type of ministry. All right, leave it alone, Pastor. I'm going to pick Galatians chapter number 6 and verse 7 through 8. Dealing with the harvest. Harvest dealing with reaping and sowing. Amen? Anybody got it before we start reading? Galatians chapter 5, I mean chapter 6, verse 1. We're teaching tonight. We're teaching tonight. It's teaching tonight. This is teaching tonight. This ain't no screaming and hollering as much as teaching. Why? Why? Because the Bible says my people are the squad for lack of knowledge. You got pastors out there wondering why their church ain't growing. Lord, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm reading the word of God, and the thing just ain't growing. Did you not know God wants you to reproduce after your kind? If you speak in tongues, you feel the Holy Ghost, you baptize in Jesus' name, what do God want? This church to be what? Reproducing people out our camp. And we are doing it. We've been doing it for a while. This ain't just started. So as long as we keep doing that, we're going to stay alive. The moment we stop reproducing out our time, you're going to die. That's why you look around, you got churches that begin. If I come into a church and the only people in that church is people that's 50 years old and above. Guess what I'm saying? Guess what I already know what's going to happen to your church? Your church is going to drop and die. Give it about 20 years. I'm not a prophet. I don't have to be a prophet. I may uh, pay me tip to the prophetic, but it don't take a prophet to walk into your church and they see your church got a bunch of mature people and have no younger folks. We got to start ministering to the young people too. Young people got to get in the pulpit. Young people got to preach. Young people got to lead proud. Young people got to lead praise up because that's the lifeline of any church. It's the young folks. That's the harvest. I walk into a church. I see nothing around except all the people. Guess what I'm doing? Y'all are going to drop it down. Unless y'all start reaching out to get somebody in here, get some women in here that got some children, get some children, young people filled with the Holy Ghost, get them speaking in tongues and roll my goodness and taking over some position. And when and when the young folks start taking over other people, don't get mad. Let them come out. Don't hold them back. One of the worst things you can do for a young person is to hold them back. Talk about wait your turn.
Keep on holding them back. God will tell them, I'll run you. The homes. So we got to get people to come up. We need young people to come up and start ministering to young people. It is imperative. You young folks that's got the Holy Ghost, that's baptized in Jesus' name, that's filled with the Holy Ghost, that's living it on the job, that's living it at school, that may be living it at college. You need to be in your position. You need to be a pastor. You need another usher. I volunteer. I want usher. You need somebody to clean the bathroom? I clean the bathroom. Did y'all finish that? Who, who, read, who read that scripture? Galatians chapter 6, verse number, number 7 through 8. 7 and 8. 7 and 8. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth. Whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh. He that soweth to his flesh. Shall of his flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit. Reap life everlasting. Stop him. I used to go out on outreach. And we'll go and reach and, and go and preach over here in certain areas. And then there'll be people say, I'm coming out to church Sunday. Did not come. But guess what happened? God sent somebody else. Somebody you being witness to. One water, one plant. God, you didn't. So you be walking around with your chest out. Look what I've done. God said, I'm getting an increase on this. You just going out there and water some stuff. You going out there and plant some stuff. And you might say, I'm planting them, sowing seed. And my husband, I want to get saved. Go out there and witness to somebody else's husband or wife and let them come into the house of God and let them get saved while you're busy doing God's business. He's able to do something in your husband's life, in your wife's life. Baby, I'm going to tell y'all, revival, I'm going now. Revival, and I'm for revival if somebody's getting revived. I am for revival if somebody's getting revived. If you just coming to church to raise an offering, I ain't stuck in that. I ain't interested in that. That's not the purpose of revival. I always thought Revival was supposed to be a re-energizing, like it says in the book of Acts, right by chapter number five, and, uh, chapter five, one of verse thirty-four. It says, "After they had prayed, a uh, chapter number four, that after they had prayed, the place that they was at was shaken. It ain't no shaking going on in your revival. It ain't nobody getting filled with the Holy Ghost in your revival. You just having what church?" You just having a social club. And ain't nobody, why ain't nobody can say it? Because ain't nobody going to your office. Sinners coming to church, we look at them like a cow standing in the gate. Woo, child. I don't know what's wrong with her. She don't know how to dress. No, she don't know how to dress. You don't need her. Because they ain't saved. So what do you expect? Sister, the Lord is so good. You don't understand how God has been good to me. And when somebody comes to mountain, please, y'all, go and greet them. Ain't nothing more pathetic than going to church when folks don't greet you. That ain't cool. Me and my wife recently went to a church. You know, like everybody came up to greet us. I'm saying, that's what I'm talking about. I love that. I mean, come on now, we can't. Oh, oh, and, and you gotta watch it. Let me tell you what happened at the church sometimes. We get into our clicks to get clicked up. So the part of being over there talking to someone, child! Oh Lord! Good to the walking out if you don't pay attention. Me and Lake Lake Jack, we try to get you on before the end. I want every, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. We want to catch the visitors before they walk out and greet them. Amen. Every single time. Amen. Amen. All right. So deal with the harvest. Deal with the harvest. Somebody say deal with the harvest. So you reap what you sow. 
In the harvest, you're going to reap what you sow. You sow good, you're going to reap good. You sow evil, evil is coming back your way. Amen? Amen? Let's go a little bit further. Genesis chapter 11. I know I'm going on some of the scripture we're in over Sunday, but I'm going back on. Genesis chapter 11 and verse number 6. Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6. Amen? Saints, we got to get on. We got to start doing some stuff for the people in the community. Amen? We got to start doing stuff for people in the community. Amen? Amen. Stuff that don't require a spotlight. And every time you do something, you ain't going on Facebook and showing it. Do stuff in secret that God may reward openly. And I understand, church, I understand. It's good publicity to put everything on Facebook. Let me tell you something. Everything don't need to go on Facebook. When you're doing a good work for somebody, everybody don't need to know that. Do it in secret and let the Lord reward you openly. Huh. Now I know sometimes you're doing a street meet, put that on Facebook. I got it. I got it. You're giving out clothes, you're giving out stuff to people. Let me let y'all in on a little secret. It's not cool. All okay. kinds. To show yourself giving people that are homeless or that are hungry food. It's a good deal to give to the homeless. It's a good deal to give food to those that are hungry. Just don't make it a publicity stunt. Y'all got it. Does that make sense? Genesis chapter number 11 and verse 6. Let's go over that real quick. And then we're going to go a little further. Genesis 11 and verse 6. Talk about the Tower of Babel. You know, they was all, they had one language, one mind. We need to be on one accord. It is very important. What we go on, we need to be on one accord. We cannot be having the visions and schisms and people. Watch your spirit. Let me let you know something. Watch what the, I'm checking out what the devil's saying to me. The Bible says, watch and pray. Every thought, you get ready to go to outreach, and now the devil of gospel spirit come over you. A suspect, you know the saints ain't treat me right. You know they didn't talk to me. Then they see me in my new dress. Ain't nobody comment on my new dress. Then they see these new shoes. I even got a problem with them. I walk right up behind him. I say, hey, how you doing? Smile at him, greet him. They ain't say nothing about my new friends. When we go on, we cannot get in our feelings. We need to be on one accord. And we need to start using this statement. I'm begging y'all, let's start doing it. Whenever you're tempted to talk about a brother or sister, I go, okay, let's pray about it. Because you're talking about it, they're going to fix the problem. Let's pray about it. Amen? Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 11 and verse 6 and see what the Bible says. It says and the Lord says behold the people is one and they have one all one language and this that they have begun to do and now nothing shall be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Stop right there for a second. The power of being on one call even when you're not doing God's will. You see it still work even when you're in your death. God said when men get on one accord, they're able to accomplish almost the impossible if they can just get on one accord. They ain't never been as been to build no tower of Babel. Therefore he came down and confounded that land. God wanted them to what? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. They decided to build a power of Babel. So he had to come down and confound their language. But he made, see, this is a nugget right here. He said, they're all in one language. They all have one language and one purpose. Ain't nothing going to tap a church quicker than division. 
Ain't nothing going to hinder a move of God quicker than the spirit of division. Amen? Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They was all together and they all had the right mind, the same mind. They was on one accord. There was no schism. There was no friction. There was no fraction. They all had one purpose and certainly there came a sound from heaven. Sometimes the move of God, I'm telling you, sometimes we hinder the move of God ourselves. Having the spirit of the vision. Amen? You can hinder the move of God yourself. I'm saying this. If anyone want to ever come back to Mount they're welcome to come back to That they have left Mount they're welcome to come back. But if you go into a church and you cannot get on one accord with that pastor, please don't just sit there and hinder the move of God. You do them injustice and you do yourself injustice. Because the spirit, the Bible says, quench not the spirit. A person that ain't on one accord with you will quench the spirit. And I believe as the ability to quench the move of God. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all together. They was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. So talking about each other ain't, ain't, ain't wisdom. Mm -mm. God ain't pleased when we talk about each other and backstab each other and pull each other down and and stop, don't trust our brother, don't trust our sister. Amen? Let's go to Proverbs chapter number 18 and verse number 24. We'll cut more scriptures, we're going to be out here tonight. But we did it with the harvest. Somebody said we did it with the harvest tonight. And how to plant, and how to get good stuff to come up. Proverbs 18 and verse number 24. Proverbs 18 and verse 24. See what the word of God says. I'm almost there. Somebody say the hall is cleaning, but the labor is of few. Amen. 18 verse 24. Mm. Oh, Jesus. I'm out of sin since I'm in that chapter. 18 and verse number 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like bars of the castle. A man better shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen? Now we're not talking about finding a good wife. That's a blessing when you find one. Drop down to verse 24. A man that has a friend must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Saints, watch the spirit of offense. I'm saying this, I'm saying this in love. Watch out for the spirit of defense. Jesus said, it's going to come, but woe be unto the person that brings it. Don't intentionally go out there and offend your brother or your sister. God will hold you accountable for that. I'm serious. We God will hold me accountable for that if I'm intentionally going out there picking fights with brothers and sisters in the body of Christ for no reason. It says a brother, verse 19, offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Now, this is the other side of that. In the New Testament, it tells you if your brother or sister offend you, how many times you're supposed to forgive them? Seven? 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 
70? 70 times 7, at least 490. I stopped counting. Child, you mess with me so much, I'm so sick of you. Man, you all right. I love you. I forget. I forget. That's around about 199. <laughs> Keep it up, I'll keep it up, I'll keep it up. I'll keep on spouting. I get to that night, uh, 4,409, uh, what's it, 89? It's on. 490 is on. I'm going to tell you a piece of my mind. Okay, a brother, drop down to verse 24. A man that has a friend must show himself friendly. Okay, here we go. I'm saying this. I'm saying this. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking to Barry Jones. I'm Barry Jones. Am I friendly on my job? Am I friendly on my job? Amen. I try to be. We got to ask ourselves, are we friendly on our job? Do we walk? One thing used to really upset me uh, that made me sick about doctors. And I love doctors. Sometimes they, they sometimes deliver all help me. I my wife deliver all these babies. I'm, I love. Them. But one thing when I used to first work in the uh, when I was working in the military, um, well actually it wasn't the military because in the military when you walk past a doctor or officer you had to salute them. And guess what they done? They saluted you back. But when I first first start working in a hospital. I would walk past doctors and they wouldn't speak. And I started getting an epiphany. I started thinking maybe they handicapped. What is it? They can't speak. So when I say good morning, you doc, you supposed to say what? Good morning back. Then your mom ever teach you something? Are you that deep and smart? You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm talking about talking about. But now I see people are more personal. But isn't it rude when you walk past somebody and they can't speak to you? I don't want that spirit and manner. I don't want that arrogant spirit and manner that you can't speak to nobody. You so deep in the spirit you can't speak? A friend a man that has friends, plural. The reason why he has friends, because he's showing himself friendly. And there's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. If you show yourself friendly, you're going to have friends. If you show yourself adverse, you're going to have what? Enemy. You're going to reap what you sow. Now, I do admit, I work full time, I'm pastoring, I'm a father. I don't have a lot of time to be doing this and that and the third, like the young. But I do try to be friendly to poor people. Amen? I want all the saints of them to be friendly on your job. Talk to people. Smile at people. Let the people know that you got God on the inside. It's a challenge sometimes, man. Amen. It sure only is. You don't know what they do to me on my job. Yeah. But I bet you they ought to get your paycheck when it's time. Luke chapter number 14, verse 23. Luke 14 and verse 23. Amen. And I admit the job sometimes is sort of the hardest harvest to really be a good witness to. When I was in management, I couldn't always smile at people's face when they weren't doing their job. It wasn't funny. Do your job. But even though you're in charge, you still got to be able to show time. Go to the Word of God. Luke chapter 15, 14 and verse 23. Are we there? Uh, we just going to read verse 22 and 23. We're going to read all of that about the wedding. You know, the master had a wedding, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it was a marriage. And he, you know, you know, you know in other words, uh, and, but the thing he had read here said, the Lord said unto the, unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compare them to come that my house may be filled. Amen? See, the people begin to make excuses. I, I don't want, it's pulling on me. I got to go there. I got to go there. 
Amen. I gotta go there. I've got to. Luke chapter 14, verse number 16. And he said unto them, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to what? To say to them that was being come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one accord, with one consent, begin to make excuse. First, the first said unto them, I have brought a piece of ground, and I must need, needs, go and see it. Oh, that's very important, though. He can't wait till tomorrow. I pray you have me excuse. And another said, I have brought five yokes of oxen, and I go to prove them. Can't you prove them tomorrow, day after tomorrow? I pray you have me excuse. Why am I saying that? Because the excuses was ridiculous. What? You go to prove them right now? You can't come to supper tonight. You can't, oh, I'm going there. You can't come to church tonight. I don't have a, oh, I, oh did, I, did I slip out? You can't come to church on Sunday. Oh, you don't understand, Pastor, I just don't feel it. Don't come with me on Friday, I'm going to be sick come Sunday. I just want to let you know. I don't think we'll make it sudden. I, I, I saw a few of something coming over. That's what it's called. The devil. It's called the devil. Amen? God may heal you by Sunday. Now, you got, you know, COVID, you can stay home. <laughs> but I'm just being real. Saints, listen to the excuses. And he and he bring oh, oh my Lord. Oh Jesus, Jesus, do you help me, Lord? Help me. And Lord said, I have married a wife. Mm -hmm. I married a wife. And therefore I cannot come. Oh Mama Jay, I'm going there. Shall we go there? On our honeymoon, did we not come to church? We done were grown up too and got ourselves together and went to church on Sunday morning. And got back to the hotel and got busy doing what grown up do. <laughs> Mom, I'm not asking the people to be like us. Mom says, okay, okay. Time out. Time out. Time out. All right, leave it alone, Pastor. Mom just says, please change the subject. I'm not encouraging you to do that. No. We were very, very ultra spiritual. <laughs> if you own your honeymoon, enjoy your honeymoon. <laughs> Ain't no time to be speaking in tongues. Let's go to the word. Right? <laughs> Amen. Go to scripture. Okay. All right. Let's go to the word. Amen. But you see the excuses that they had. Do you see the ridiculous excuses they had? And therefore, I cannot. He said, I can not come. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Oh my Lord, oh Jesus, help me, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me. God get angry with us with our excuses sometimes. Now I understand. This ain't about church attendance. Sometimes people say, you got to be at home. I got it. I got it. You have an uh, emergency come up. You got to be at home. got to be somewhere else. You got to be in the hospital. I got it. I understand that God will do. Man should. God understands that man should. But here's another one. He said the master of the house being angry said to his servants. See, Jesus speak to people in parables. He said, God is going to speak to folks in peril. And it don't say that God is angry with us, but it make me wonder, is he angry with us with some of our excuses? How is it that we can get a job and we can't never come to church? The God that gave you the job is keeping you from him? I don't think so. 
All right. And got pride in the temple. See what's going to happen. Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the main, the halt, the blind. In other words, God is saying, whosoever will come into my house. It's quiet now. I ain't hear no amen on that. I must, you must be scared because I was screaming. Let me talk softly. Let me talk softly. And the servant said, Lord, it is done. And as thou hast commanded, and yet there is drawn. See, don't listen to me, saints. On Sunday, on, on Sunday when we packed, you know, got a nice little crowd out, and, and the parking lot is full. And somebody said, I would invite somebody out because we just ain't got no place to park. The Lord make a way. Your job is just to invite them out. Amen? You just invite them out. Don't worry about the parking space and the parking lot. Somebody said, I would invite them out. But son, you know, Pastor, we can only uh, park a certain amount. Of just invite them out. Let God deal with that. He said, I've done all this and there's still room. Amen? If we ever pack out this place on Sunday to the point that we ain't got no sitting room, we got some chairs back there somewhere. We go get some folding chairs and put them in the hall, in the aisle. We'll make another row up front right there and another row right there. But we got to go and get the folks. And I'm pleased with y'all. Y'all say, on Sunday, y'all hey, Lord, oh. Many pastors would like to have a congregation the size of Mount on Sunday. And sometimes on Wednesday night. They would like to have that many people on Wednesday night. Some of them ain't got number one or two people on Wednesday night. We are blessed. We are blessed. But we ain't doing good enough. Don't get your chest stuck out. Because you ain't. Y'all remember I told y'all Sunday? They said that we only work with like one sixth of our brain or one tenth of our brain. That's how it is with outreach. We only do 1% of what we're supposed to do with outreach. We don't compel people to come. We don't invite folks out. And the devil will have us so busy on our job. My job, I've been working on my job with three computer screens. <laughs> Sprung out. Got a proof screen over here, proof screen over there. Got a laptop right there doing all that. But the Lord, he want me Baby, get up from that computer. Go out there and tell somebody, invite them out. Say something about Jesus. But the devil will have you so encumbered with your stuff that you ain't got time for that. I'm telling you what God loves. Amen? Let's go Father. All right? Compel them to come. Amen? And the Lord said, under them on the servant, go out into the hedges into the hedges, into the highways and hedges, and compare them to come, that my house might or may be filled. Amen? Go get them. Go get them. Divide them out of Walmart. Divide them out of B&H. Divide them out of whatever, Costco's, wherever you go. At the mall. Invite somebody in the church. Amen? All right, let's go to Acts chapter number two. Uh, Acts chapter number uh, number one, and verse eight it says, "You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be what a witness." But you shall receive power that the Holy Ghost after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you that you may be what be what witnesses plural unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost, uttermost, uttermost part of the earth. 
the reason why God filled it with the Holy Ghost is to be a what? A witness. I'm on the show, y'all. I'm saying it's more than just singing and praising and. It's about being a witness. That's what the harvest is about. Okay, let's go a little further. Amen. Mark 16 and verse number 15. Mark 16 and verse 15. And we need to get another baptism done before it get before it get cold. It's all getting cold. You do one more baptism outside. So so go on witness to somebody and get them to come to church so we get invited to be baptized in Jesus. Amen? Anybody got it before me? Mark chapter number 16 and verse number 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To how many? Every creature. Stay in church and preach the gospel to every creature. Stop right there. The commission ain't got nothing to do with church. I said the commission, the great commission, has very little to do with being stationary in one place. He said, go. He said, go. He said, sit down and come to Mount at 1220 uh, at 1222 Neely Street and do your little song and do your dance and do your prayer and do your preaching and do your gift and do your that. No, he said go into all the whole world. And until we're going, we'll miss it God. Oh, we ain't by ourselves. Y'all know that, right? The average church is doing the same thing and they drive them. And they begin to drop. Amen? We gotta go. 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 go ahead and read, please. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we supposed to be telling the lost world if you believe and you get baptized, you're gonna be saved. Go ahead and read. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Uh-huh. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Uh-huh. And my name shall they cast out devils. Yes. They shall speak with new tongues. Yes. They shall take up servants. Uh-huh. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen, amen, amen. Acts chapter number uh, 6, verse 1 through 6, real quick. <laughs> amen. Amen. He's the side to follow believer. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. Amen. In those days, when the numbers of the numbers of the disciples were multiplied, they arose when God began to multiply the church and add to the church. What's gonna happen sometime? Confusion. When God began to blow men up even more than what we're doing now, guess what's gonna happen? Watch that spirit of people trying to get positions, trying to get, trying to shuffle to be in authority. That's confusion. Watch the spirit of gossiping, backbiting. There's a spirit of confusion sometimes. When the numbers begin to multiply, that's just human. Somebody said that's human nature. All of that ain't the devil. I know we like blaming everything on the devil. That's just us, some of that. That's just us. We like to click up. We like to have right of guys in the church. Besties. That's us. That's human nature. Amen. But it ain't pleasing in God's sight. There arose a murmuring of the preachers against the Hebrews. Because their widows was neglected in the daily administration. And the twelve talk about that, how they called people and you know they prayed, they called people out, they laid their hands on. Them. Amen. And when they set order in the church, I I I keep I, I, I have the habit of trying to shortchange a little bit, but I gotta go in and read it. Amen. And then the twelve called 
the multitude of the disciples under them and said, it is no reason, it is no reason, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Well, well, brother, look ye out, ye are out among you, seven men of the report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we, will, whom we, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying, please the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen and talk about full of our uh, man full of full of the Holy Ghost. And Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Thomas and Timon and Prometheus and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Who when they set whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed for them, prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased. And the word of God increased. The word of God is not going to increase effectively until the ministry get in its proper place. If you got a call of God in your life, don't let a lot of junk weigh you down. Uh-uh. You don't need to have a lot of stuff on your mind and weighing you down. Keep you from doing what God called you to do. Amen. You can't do it. Amen? Because the church will grow when we as ministers will be in our right place. Amen? Prayer, reading the word, meditating on the word of God. Amen? All right. Mark chapter 4, verse number 29. Mark 4, 29. All right. Make some noise now. Mark 4 and verse 29. See what the word of God says. The Bible says. Verse number 26. And he said, so in the kingdom of God, verse 26, Mark 4 and 26. As a man, he should what? Cast seed into the ground. And he should sleep. And rise night and day, and the seed shall what spring and grow. What? He know not how. In other words, when we do what we're supposed to do on the level of ministry, it's gonna start growing. And we ain't gonna figure out, we don't know how he's doing it. He just because he's the one that does it. Amen. For the earth bringing forth what fruit of itself, first the blade and then the ear, and after that, the full corn in the ear. But when the when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle. Because the harvest is coming. He put it in a sickle because the harvest is coming. Are you ready when the harvest comes? I want to say this real quick about foreign mission. I was saved in a foreign mission church in Okinawa, Japan. So I'm definitely for foreign missions. Don't ever think that I'm not. I am. But we got missionary fields right here. And we need to reach the people that's close to us on our job. Try it in our neighborhood, at our schools. Amen? But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the circle because the harvest is coming. Are you in your right place that when the harvest comes, you can take over? Are you in your right place? Are you in your right place? All right. Last scripture. Revelation chapter 14 and verse number 19, uh, 15 and 19. We're done. I know it's teaching tonight. And I want to open it up, I mean, real briefly. I know I normally don't do this, but I'm going to do it tonight. I want to hear what y'all think about the topic. And if you have anything to add, please do. Amen. Revelation chapter number 14 and verse 19, uh, 15. Whenever you get done, please say amen. 14 and verse 15. And the Bible reads as follows. It says, And another angel came out of the, of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud thrust in the sickle and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. When the devil is busy, when stuff begins to fall apart, that's the perfect time to witness. 
And he that sat on the cloud thrust in sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Another angel came down out of the temple, which is in heaven. And he also having a, a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the altar, which had the power of fire and cried with a loud voice, cried to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in the sharp sickle and gather the cluster of vines in the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And angel thrust in the sickle, his sickle into the earth and gathered the vines of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. All his bow, all eyes closed. God, we ask for your help tonight.